what are they going to do to me? They being, you know, the system. Um, you know, I realized that I really couldn't be broken any further than I already was. And that there was only one way, and that was up. And it made me, um, maybe not fearless, but less fearful of taking on the system and working to make changes. And I think my first big step on policy was at the city level with my member of the city council. And I had just finally bought a new home. And it had taken a long time to find this perfect single story home in a neighborhood where, you know, the grocery store was, was a wheelchair distance away and, and these sorts of things. And I met my neighbors and wanted to get to know them, but I couldn't get down the curb and across the street. And I asked about a curb cut and ended up fighting until we got a city policy that for homeowners um, living with disability, that they could get a mid-block curb cut. And that helped me with taking out my garbage and going about meeting my neighbors and all of these sorts of things. It didn't take very long, it took a few months really of making calls and, and asking for help. Getting it done for myself was one victory, but realizing that I had changed a policy and somewhere down the road, some other person was going to have an experience that was gonna be easier, smoother, because this thing was done, that pleased me a great deal. That's a legacy. And, you know, my name will never be attached to it. It's not that kind of legacy, but it's knowing that, that as I said, life is smoother for people in the future because some nameless person fixed it uh, before they got there. That means a lot to me. Gosh, I met uh, Congressman Greg Stanton. He was still a member of the city council and I really enjoyed him. You know, he was open and approachable and kind. He wasn't my city council member, but he was really nice. And then right after he became mayor, I was serving as the chair of the Mayor's Commission on Disability Issues. And I met him at the opening of what was then called the SPOFIT. It's the uh, Piper Sports and Fitness Center at Ability360. And it was a big deal. And you know, there he was with his security detail and things. And I went up and shook his hand and said, hi, I'm Jennifer Longden. You don't remember me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I chair your Commission on Disability Issues. I assumed that he would be putting someone else in as chair. Um, and he looked at me and he said, um, great, I'm looking forward to working with you. I want you to be bold and challenge me and make sure you hold me accountable. And I'm like, okay then. <laughs> and sometimes I, and, and our friendship grew uh, over time because I approached him quietly at first, excuse me, Mr. Mayor, and then be like, hey, <laughs> Uh, respectfully but it took me a long while to realize that I didn't need to come in so hot to be heard uh, that metaphorically I could clear my throat and and catch someone's attention um, and so there was this period in my advocacy where I was uh, perhaps too bombastic um, and it's taken a while to learn the art of diplomacy that comes with advocacy when advocacy plus power at some point requires diplomacy to move forward and um, that's been the challenge that I face now is learning how to act in a way that I can build trust and build relationships rather than shame change and to happen.